Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes you, it's useful to uh, identify the edges of things where it is sharper so that you can use this effect, for example in masking and so on. And the simplest way to do this, I'm just going to hit Control J here to duplicate this so you can see the effect without losing the original. If I go to Filters and Detect and Detect Edges, if this does this destructively in that it changes this image here into this here and you can see there are lines here around the edges and you can make those monochrome and so on but it does a fairly good job here of finding edges. So how about if we'd like to do that kind of thing in a sort of a way that doesn't get all these other little bits and pieces here and particularly something that is controllable that we can use various things to say no I don't want all that detected I want it in as something else. So let's try that. So I'm going to just take that put it underneath so you can't see it and we'll try something here. So first of all the basic principle of edge detection is, is that when you blur something then the th if it's something's already blurred then it's not going to change much but if it's sharp then those bits are going to change so up here this is going to be changing around here and so I just go to a live filters here and go to a blur and but changing this here just blurs it so I want to see how much has changed so by the way I keep preserve alpha on and go to the blend mode here and go to the difference blend and then you can see here, it's going a bit closer, you can see that there is the edges there are detected so that when I move this here, if it goes out, the further it goes out, the more you can see this effect. So you kind of pick something here. Often I'll use about one pixel, which means some things will appear, but some won't. But you can adjust that as you like. Right, the next thing is... I want to make this a little bit brighter so I can see this more. And the way to do that is with levels. So go to adjustments and levels. And here you can see here's the histogram and this is all the way up here so this is a wasted space. So I can drag the white level down and as I do so things here are getting brighter. But now we're seeing these bits of noise and things appearing here in the background. And also it's in it's in colour. So the first thing I can do here is just within this is go to grey here, change the RGB to grey and then it's monochrome. But it's gone grey again here because when I change this this resets itself so I need to bring this back again. Okay. So now then can I get rid of these things in the background? Well a simpler way to do that is to do a noise reduction. So I go to denoise. Then if I turn this up as I turn that up, that background, the noisier bits start to disappear. In fact, I can push them further away by turning the luminance detail down. So I can get rid of a lot of that by one all the way up and the other one all the way down. So what else can I do here? Next thing is where I've got an edge here, you've got, I've got a double thing. I'd like this to just basically say, let's select all of that. So what I'm going to do with that is to put another blur in. Now just to knock this into a single line, turn up the radius a little bit until there we go we've got just that area there. We could leave it at that or if I want to sort of harden this up again then I can go to another levels. And now I can bring this down again here and see the whites are getting kind of whiter here what I can do is force the background here to be a bit more black by pushing the black level up. So now that get a lot more contrast in the way this is being selected. So there you go, that'll do for that. If I do Control zero to go all the way out, you can see actually there's a lot being selected here and I could vary this with all these controls. But to capture this, I go to the Channels tab and because it's black and white, in the composite here, because what you're going to see 
any of these will do to use this so I right click on this and say create spare channel. So down here now I've captured this. So now I can get rid of these so I can shift click the bottom and just drag them underneath. So they're still there if I need them but I can bring them back up again. So what can I do up here? So now I'm only looking at this, everything beneath this you can't see. So now I can start using this. So for example I could say let's do a sharpen. Let's actually zoom into this again to see that effect. And if I did an ordinary sharpen now, let's do an unsharp. And typically with this I'll put the radius up to about one and then control it with a factor. And if I increase here you can see it's sharpening this here but also the noises here is, is this bit, the background here is getting noisier. So if I take that spare channel, right click that and say load to unsharp mask alpha, you can see the sharpening is, is held here but the background is now, it's not been affected because it's been masked out. So you can see there before and after, before and after, I've constrained that to here. I'll just do one more thing that you can do with this. And that is to go to, um, let's do say a recolor. If I go to recolor here, then it is here. But if I go to the spare channel, right click and load to it, now it's constrained to those areas. But this means I can to go things. Let's go to say a green here, pull the saturation of this down and turn the lightness down to a darker. So I've got a kind of a darker green here. I'm going to pull this down again. And I can perhaps even turn the opacity down here. But if I control zero to go out, you can now see before and after. I'm just emphasizing those areas there. So the stems here are becoming more visible. Anyway, that's it. That's the basic principles of this. You can do a lot of other things with it, but I'll leave that for you to explore and experiment. Thank you very much for watching.